Thank you. Uh, this, this is something I've been doing on tour. I've been uh, making a documentary about the tour. Um, but one thing I haven't really been able to do much is to actually shoot the shows. somewhere and see what happens. First thing I want you to hey I have to turn right yes here, yes yeah? yes turn right <laughs> yeah I want the first thing I want you to get yourself is like some pepper mace and a big fat hairy gun. You got you gotta get yourself a cowboy hat. You know <laughs> Americans love cowboy hats. Yeah. And guns, yeah. Get yourself a cowboy hat and a gun, you can't go. Oh my god. Tom Story, what would you like to say about the tour? Uh, well, I wish you best of luck. Thanks. Should I start interviewing other people and ask them what they think about the tour? Oh, uh, yeah. Why not? Yeah. Oh, what, what do you think should I expect from, from the trip? I'm really kind of... I have no idea. I'm like... Hey, mostly uh, worried. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just so jealous. I want to do the same. <laughs> and the people will throw bottles at you, even if they like you. They're like... <laughs> Hello, I'm Mary Ocher. The last five or even more than five months, I was... Uh, um, <laughs> I was researching like crazy, writing um, to practically everybody I know that is from North America. And uh, I, I got hundreds of suggestions from people um, that were extremely friendly, people that I didn't know, people that were friends of friends and strangers, just people that said, oh, we love your music and we're going to help. And, um, and I'm really excited to meet some of those people and uh, talk to them. <laughs> Eric, do you have any advice for the tour? Anything I should expect? Um, don't smoke any crack. <laughs> That's uh, a good one. If anyone yeah, offers good. you crack, make sure that it's from their body. Okay, I'll try. <laughs> we didn't have any GPS. We used a map. We didn't have any cell phones. We used pay phones. Which is really true, actually. We used to drive into town and go to a pay phone and then call the promoter and ask him where the hell the venue was. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was an extremely long, complicated procedure organized. Uh, transportation, accommodation, flights, and the visa, which was an entirely different nightmare. Until about an hour ago, I didn't know whether I was gonna get this thing, but uh, holy shit, I did. I have a visa. Now I have to send it. Translating uh, press clips to prove to the government that I really am uh, a musician. We met the Krams, you know, we met people from R.E.M., we met the people from B-52s, uh, from L7, all this all this really, you know, kind of cel pop cel celebrities in the 90s, you know, we met. I'm a little overwhelmed. dream last night and uh, ironically it actually came true uh, I, I get <laughs> an email from this guy telling me oh by the way I'm not working at that place anymore I'm gonna desperately try to find for find some sort of replacement show but it's such a short notice there's only a month left that I, I don't really know what the chances are putting promotional stickers on some of the copies So uh, 
I have this really unhealthy tendency to always imagine the worst case scenario. Yeah, but there's still there's still another um, plane to board. Okay, well, kiss, kiss. Meine Damen und Herren, im Namen des Kapitäns und der Besatzung heiße ich Sie herzlich willkommen an Bord. To Sarah's place. Safety. Today is the first day of a tour. Um, I'm at Angel. Oh, finger fucking transgender, rock my generation. <laughs> and uh, Jeff Lewis. Uh, well, let's see. I mean, I started making songs in 1997 when I graduated from college. Um, wandered around a lot. Do you still have a record label? Yeah. <laughs> She's a musician on tour. I'm just sort of documenting this the tour. It's just and and tour. it just opened up and I'm staying with Sarah She's in her awesome. wonderful place yeah. opposite the station. She's been working with King Kong? Oh, killer. What label is he on? He's on a lot of. He's now in Merge, yeah. Pretty, like so. There's a cassette. Yes. I'm so excited about it. You would know the answer. Yeah. Oh wait, <laughs> I know your music because oh, you yeah. actually emailed me about you. Before. Oh wow. Yay. People could live in these lofts and afford them, but now they're condos. Yeah, this is a really good shot. Look at that thing. What is that? This is Jordan. <laughs> now we're getting a nice guided tour of. What used to be five points in Queens. You can actually still see some of the graffiti. They didn't do a good job of covering it. And I remember if you were on the, the seven train here pulling up, you would see it. And it was just massive, colorful. Oh, yeah. It's really frustrating. I wish we could go up on the roof. There's <laughs> gotta be a way. Mary Arch is in New York City. That's the first show. It's house show where they host shows in the cellar. This is so nice! The projection. Yeah, that's not bad. First show completed. 49 more to go. Lost all of my makeup before it even started. I actually missed the last train and looks like I'll have to wait until the morning to get to the damn airport. Seattle Airport. <laughs> Next stop. To make things even better, the handle doesn't work. Uh, well, I'll explain to the camera. I just sort of freaked out at the airport and started kicking the suitcase and crying, which luckily wasn't documented. <laughs> and these nice two people picked me up in their car. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Second show of a tour. Uh, we're in Seattle. And um, uh, and already what I imagined would happen uh, would ha uh, actually happened about a couple of weeks ago. I had a nightmare about this show because I had a feeling that this is the type of person that you can't rely on. After some more negotiation and uh, a lot of people being really nice and supportive, looks like the guy will pay us after all. Uh, we're going to the Josephine where you can play a show and, and charm all of these people. Endlessly. And this is a spontaneous show that was organized basically just now By at me, yeah. yes. <laughs> and the wow. passenger. Yeah. So we're basically crashing somebody else's show. It's a fundraiser in the house called the Josephine. People are doing us favors constantly and um 
and we have to be respectful and appreciative of the fact that they're sacrificing their time and space and money and being extremely hospitable. Um, these are the hot fruit girls and uh, they were kind enough to allow us to stay in their house. Thank you so much. Oh, you're so welcome. We're so glad that you made it. Oh, Same thanks. Same south of Seattle. How long have you been playing together? We just had our, uh, what is our third year anniversary on Valentine's Day. Oh, wow, cool. We all went out for dinner. <laughs> yeah. It was really cute. Really romantic. We had a Valentine's Day band-aid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. Here's, here's some paintings. <laughs> there, there are many hundreds of drawings in my studio because I will, uh, I'll come in and lock the door and just spend the entire day drawing. That's a concert poster for a show we're doing in a couple of weeks. Yeah, so I have hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of drawings. <laughs> It's a place called Battleground. Weird. I, I wonder if we're going to find stores that sell uh, ammunition. Yeah. Oh, sure. <laughs> well, we can get more snacks because we want to get more food. Yeah, we're going to get some more food. For sure, I need some more. We are in? We're in Portland. We, we're going to a record store. Millennium Records. Millennium Records, which is sort of here and it has a lot of colorful weird shit on it. Want a copy of my record or CD or tape? Sure. And well, in this town, vinyl is the is the hip way to go. So we'll, uh, yeah, it was yeah. it was produced by King Kong yeah. and it came out in the U.S. as well, but only on CD and tape. And you are Mary. And do you say Ochre? Ochre. Ochre. I'm Jack. Well, nice to meet you. Pleasure to meet you. Are you performing in town? Yes, we're performing tonight. We just got here actually. Uh huh. Where? Which uh, venue? Ah, East End. Oh, it's the East, East, East End. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, nice. How, How are you far from here? Christina, Hi. <laughs> Hi, I'm Christina. <laughs> <laughs> are you offering this to me to purchase from you? Is that what you're doing? Yes, yes, yes. I mean, oh, that's... oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I mean... thought you were uh, you were uh, giving one to the store. Um, yeah. Funny, awkward situation. He told me to go to the office, and in the office, they were actually interested in purchasing one copy directly. We are just about to leave Portland. And the show was. Amazing. Where else have I played? I know there's more. Oh, frick, uh, Fickin, Dreadthousand. Um, this is uh, Nadia's house. I have a really funny story. I, like, before the show, I went to the dark room. Yeah. And I was like, oh my gosh. And I was like, kind of psyching myself. I was like, oh my gosh, this is scary. And then the band like kind of comes out of the room and I scream. I'm like, oh my god. I'm sorry, I'm just, it's so dark in here and he comes in my face like, oh, it's dark room, isn't it? And it just smelled like bud. Like his face just smelled like he would eat so much bud. Like he was just waiting in the basement for bud. She was incredible. She also performed with her band and everybody was so sweet. today which is a nine hour drive. Some post arrival estimate of um, eight in the evening. Really horrific rain. Rain. Yeah this is intense. I can't see very far. Christina made some amazing looking salad with avocado and quinoa and loads of veggies. Well, we made it to California Yay. and it's raining. No, no, 
things. Hmm. Hmm. We are um, still in Reno. Uh, I'm developing a bit of a cold. There were about 20, maybe 25 people in the audience who were all really enthusiastic. Mm. How do you feel, Christina? Um, trashed. We're now stinky and uh, we're gonna do some laundry. Yeah, it's time to do some laundry because <laughs> my clothes are all smelly. Uh, yes. Hardly any audience. Are you videoing us? Are you, yeah? Doing a docu. <laughs> what? You're doing a docu. Oh, <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. The guy that owns the place basically just told us that if there's nobody else coming in, he will not even let us do the show. Any news? I'm really sorry. What I did he say? I didn't know. I don't know. I haven't talked to him again. I don't really want to talk to him again. Me neither. It's just that I'm wondering what we can do to try to save it. Yeah. <laughs> Big neon light. I played here a couple, like a couple months ago, and it was like a similar amount of people here, mm -hmm. and they didn't cancel the show on us then. You know. It's fucking amazing that he really does not care that. Yeah. That I think he's on drugs. A lot of people are just being total douchebags. I wonder yeah. if we can just go on stage and tell the audience about it and then try to keep the audience yeah. on our side. Yeah. Should we That'd do it? Cool. We should watch Tyler. He's really good too, yeah. Yeah, in Berkeley. Mm. I think we're in Oakland. I no, we're in Berkeley. Oh, okay. <laughs> made peanut butter in a very peculiar machine. It's really yummy. <laughs> San Francisco. Um, I got these wonderful shoes. I was extremely abusive and cynical to the audience, um, even though for some strange reason they kept buying merchandise for the first time on this tour. Um, a lot of. Uh, hey, everybody, it's Jessica Simpson. This is Beyonce. This is Justin Timberlake. Hey, this is Harold. And that is DJ in the Bay. <laughs> I'm video recording the whole time. Yeah. Very much so. Thanks so much for letting us stay uh, here. Oh, of course. It's like the holy grail of like documentary. Oh, yeah, photography. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. So, <laughs> hello. <laughs> <laughs> well, San Francisco was really nice. I think I must have seen the entire city because I took buses everywhere. I got yeah. lost. Have we are like here. And like, yeah, really far away from Jordan. Where are we exactly? <laughs> yeah, like somewhere, somewhere uh, to say five. We could have been in South America. Oh, that would be fun. We could have been anywhere really around the world. It could be in Russia. In Russia. We managed to get a cold and uh, in order to save my voice, we are now in a pharmacy. I'm Dr. Christina and I'm looking for some medication. And just ooh, wow! No nut allergies, right? No nut allergies. It's kind of amazing. It looks like everything in the menu is uh, vegetarian or even. Mm -hmm. It's more vegetarian. Oh, yeah. Most mostly vegan. 
So these are Adrian and Kate, and they are in Hyenas. We're gonna play a couple of shows together, or maybe even more. We're playing a few shows together. Yeah. Yeah, maybe two shows, and I expect the crowd to be wild. It's pretty nice. Oh, have fun. Yeah, I'm actually never Yeah. There's a lot of. There's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> it's very preachy. Yeah, it's preachy. Let's see what this one says. Very preachy. Oh. Uh, Hope is the best stimulant of life. Um, at this point, I'm amused because things are just spectacular. They're fantastic. Uh, we, we survived the car crash. We're two hours late. Well, the audience looks bored and confused. Very excellent. Could you possibly record the beginning of the show? Thanks so much. I'm going to do an awkward speech. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, we had a car crash, and I was two hours late, and I had no sound check. second day in LA, sitting outside of a police station, waiting for the person that we hit to come. The number plate is Ben, and um, we have like a uh, hidden here. I'm not a mechanic, I don't know. It's probably like a paint job and fixing that. And I don't think you can go to LA without stopping by the LA TV. Yes, we have to pay them a visit. And Christina's worried about how they will treat her because she's a new driver. And the situation with the car is uncertain. We don't think that the insurance will pay. And this young lady is sick. Yeah, and... <laughs> and um, I woke up at 6 in the morning and 
tried to record that song for the Rolling Stone and the conditions were so bad with so much noise in the background and without really rehearsing just singing a cappella and crying at the same time I think it's going to be rejected Compton today I think it should be interesting Yes I actually thought it would be somewhat gentrified and it doesn't look like it at all it just looks like it's tiny houses and and all of the windows are blocked. Everything's chained. Looks like the show tonight is in a giant warehouse base in Compton. And uh, it looks really cool. Well, you're gonna be in our own movie now. Oh, what? Oh, you're yeah. gonna be in a yay! <laughs> Have fun! Okay. Bye! Bye! Yes, photography. Okay. 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 My mom calls me maybe, I don't know, four, at, on average, I would say four times a day, and uh, it's, <laughs> it's really intense. This is sort of something I do. I go into record shops in every city and pitch them the record because the distribution doesn't do a very good job. It's like paradise. It's like a musician's heaven in here. Stepping on famous people. Very random. Uh, we're in Mel's. Uh, it's a diner in Hollywood, and uh, there's a jukebox on our freaking table. That is so cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or. In the show that has 14 costume changes. How did you do that? How did I do that? Yes. Uh, same way everybody else does. Takes my clothes off, puts more on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, it was that. Uh, I had five characters and mm -hmm. 14 costume changes, and we, what they did was like an old school radio show. So cool. We did like dancing, we're like the Andrew Sisters. So at one point it was really crazy because like we did two of the Sherlock Holmes stories. The first one was like happened in Africa, and the second one happened in France. And so the one in France, it was like a, like it was happening in the courtroom. So then they would do flashbacks. But I was one of the jury boxes. And so at one point, like literally, I was jury box, and I had to run clear across, come around, and be a hooker, and then run all the way back and be a jury box. So in the back, oh we're going, hookers running, hookers running, and we're, you know, how many people participated? Everywhere. And how many people were in it? Um, I think there were about 16 people in the cast. Wow. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I even, it was so good. I invited my mom to come see it. <laughs> Let me go get your food order. Thank you so much. Cassette, which is really cool. Yeah, people, are, people are really excited about it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. No problem. <laughs> I really like um, I really like the Eden set. So you just started the label, basically. Yeah, right? in in May. And how many releases have you already put out? Um, I think about nine physical releases and then mm -hmm. a few digital compilations. I've always known that I wanted to put out other people's music, but mm -hmm. uh, for some reason I've always made it up to be such a bigger deal than it actually is. It's really beautiful here. Um, but we have to move on. <laughs> and Christine and I were craving water. 
trying to get to the ocean, but it just looks like it's just not in the cards for us. house show of the tour. <laughs> it's uh, in a small town in Texas and we're basically on our way to Austin uh, and it's going to be very interesting. It's going to be very different. We're about three hours away from Austin in a very small town in Texas. Endless farms and ranches and rodeos and uh, hunting, a lot of dead animals on the road. Cow poop, cowboy hats, a lot of poverty, ghost towns, empty gas stations, loads of religious billboards with interesting references. Mother Mary everywhere. Um, but the people are very kind, and even those were very little, uh, they just opened their houses to us and um, make us feel really welcome, which is really sweet. We're in Austin. Looks like everybody's here and their car. There's a house party. It's organized by the same guy that's organizing the show tomorrow. And, uh,. And there's a nice crowd inside, just hanging out. <laughs> That's what a house party looks like. Hey, Mary Ocher. Hey, Fenster. Hi, camera. <laughs> How's uh, the tour been going so far? Fuck you, South by Southwest. <laughs> Suck a fat corporate dick, you corporate fucking shitty fucking soulless godless festival. This is what the unofficial South by Southwest looks like. People, people that would never do free shows are kind of forced into a situation that they would have to play countless shows and only for free. Practically no audience. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So you've been playing the official program this year? Yeah. Yeah, we how, have two official shows. How were the official versus the non-official? And how was the whole experience so far? Um, I, yeah. Really good. Like, we stayed, we're staying with a friend. Um, he just moved to a place really close by. And 
I feel like really lucky actually. It's yeah. beautiful. You can walk downtown. Yeah, oh, wow. we got really lucky yeah. in that, you know, we had a friend here. I saw a lot of people stepping on demo CDs yesterday right. on the street. Totally. It's so heartbreaking. We don't make a CD. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Or> digital. <laughs> what time are you doing gay by gay gay tomorrow? Same time as today. Oh really? One? Yeah, okay. it's yeah. gonna be, I, I guess I should be there around noon. The first time I knew that South by Southwest had a big act was that Sonic Youth was playing. And I remember seeing that and thinking, wow, why is Sonic Youth playing at South by Southwest? They're already on Geffen. I'm sure they already have booking agents and stuff. But since then, they've gone on to have the BC Boys and Metallica. I mean, I don't think it gets bigger than Metallica. The main thing that has changed is that it, it's, it's really morphed over its time, in my mind, from being a conference with nighttime showcases for industry people to come and check out bands or, and to talk about the industry to more of a music festival. So, whatever you decide, <laughs> make that move with pride. Sit, we'll be there, so alive. We're at Gay by Gay Gay, and which is probably the most fun alive. part of South by Southwest. It's a, it's a big queer party. And a lot of my friends have played this part before and are gonna play today, so it's really exciting. I'm Hello. Hi. What's up? It's been a rough day. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's okay. I was deal with them. Da, da, da. I'm not going to show it off. Okay. Sunglasses. That's the way to go. Yes. Careful there. Alright. I only want the red ones. Yeah. Can you just sort them out for me, please? Yes. Yeah. I want the red ones only. Ah, hey. Hey, two, 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 two. Hello. One person in the front. Hey. <laughs> um, I can see you people in the back. All of you. <laughs> if you feel like coming closer to the stage, that would be... Great. I'm Mary Ocher. I'm on a 50-day tour in the U.S. from Berlin, Germany. It's far, far away from here. Well, we're just leaving Austin. I'm kind of happy. I hated it. I know, you were like, nobody paid any attention. I found one guy who was standing in front of the stage, so it's kind of look weird. H-O-5-5 means dogs for hoes in Texas. Dog for <laughs> hoes? Or dog for hog? Well, I think it's hoes. Hoes. Dog for hoes. Dog for hoes. Hey ho. How are you doing today? <laughs> <laughs> Did you change your underpants? We're in Dallas. We're in suburbia. We're in a small college town called Bryan. First hotel room we're staying at. It's gonna be a big clean bed and a clean bathroom. Yes. I'm really looking forward to that. Yes. It's been a long time. The good news is I can't have a drink tonight. Or maybe two, maybe three, maybe four. I get totally wasted. <laughs> I won't. I know, it's a good call. Privacy, please. Yeah. We are having an orgy. Don't disturb. <laughs> Don't disturb. <laughs> we are enjoying our orgy. Mary's just lugging all of our gear. She's doing a great job. I should work as a bellboy. You should. <laughs> Crappy America television. <laughs> yes. In St. Patrick's Day, and that's why there's the Pope's in the background. Yeah, St. Patrick's Day. Like, I don't give a shit. I just, I just like, just want to have a drink. That's all I care about. Cheers. <laughs> so good.
<laughs> so I'm going to be good. Today, we are going to Dairy Queen in Texas. I have no idea what they have on their menu. I imagine it's only ice cream. This is like the fries. It's the same option. It's got meat on it. Oh no, is it? I don't know what it is. I don't know what that is either. The gravy? Well, it seems like it's going to be really hard to dig out the ones that don't have any meat on them. We just left Texas. And I'm so happy because I hated it. <laughs> well, we're entering Louisiana. The scenery is slightly different. It changes immediately. We are in Baton Rouge. Mississippi is below us. Like not all of New Orleans is touristy. I've been walking around for a while and it's full of character. I do research. So you drive into town, Jason's you find a phone booth. Virginia. Find a phone booth, it. call the <laughs> promoter and get close. Mm. Find another phone booth. It always took about two phone booths. Oof. And then and you know, get as close as you can, find another phone, phone booth, and then call them again, and then you get to where you're going. And direction 66 over bridge into Washington State to the left. Get off East Exit, <laughs> but stay to the left. Stay to the left until Virginia Avenue. Right, right, right. Next left, <laughs> Rock Creek Parkway. Do you have an iPhone here? Um, Christina does. Oh, cool. So we have one smartphone with GPS, and mm -hmm. it helps a lot. Yeah, GPS. Yeah, but I also, I also got a map. Well, it's wind control. Wow. If it was windy. And if it was raining. The rain would fall and... Imagine the sun rising would... It takes like a... An hour. You want to see the brains? Yeah, sure. The brain. <laughs> oh, it's so relaxing. It's, yeah. I have it on all the time. <laughs> and this is the brains. Aww. So it connects outside by this computer cable. Yeah, there's the <laughs> drone, the rain, mm -hmm. the sun, the wind, and the drone, which eventually will be controlled. It'll change by temperature. If it's cold, it'll be different. <laughs> we just drove from Louisiana, passed through Mississippi, and now we're in Alabama. There are strange bugs everywhere. Which is apparently a characteristic of the area. Really strange bugs, I'm just gonna pop over there. Christina is taking a photo of Sam. We're in Athens, Georgia, uh, where I played yesterday at the Slingshot Festival. And <laughs> uh, the audience was really wonderful. We skipped. Everything in Alabama, because I ran out of battery. We stayed in a place that was stained, and it was really hard to sleep. Um, we met some people that told us about the economical difficulties and troubles with the police, and how they have to bail people out of jail, and, and apparently people that have debts can't get jobs here, because the jobs check their credit history. I was like, she was really like kicking off at me yesterday. Just ahead, 
like sliding off the saddles and like, you know, yeah. I just want to have a good time, you know. Today we decided to wear short things and uh, I discovered that my legs are extremely hairy. We're having a little break at the beach. A little deserved break. We just have to remember that it might take us about six hours. I think we'll probably be there by 10. So I'll have to call the people and ask them if it's okay to come back. Yeah, ask them first before we go. of a gallery in Atlanta and looks like people are doing crack on the street. I was so happy to find out that we're on the ground floor. Yeah. <laughs> And apparently we can even do laundry here. We're in Kansas City. The only place that actually had some sort of local press that worked. It turns out that we can't stay here after all. And we're exhausted and we have to go somewhere else and maybe sleep on someone's couch. Some of the shows are... Um, well attended and some shows only have about 20 people and somehow I'm I'm okay with that. Then you can kind of scrape the gooey stuff into the garbage. Yeah. <laughs> You can actually throw some of that in here too if you want. Okay, I thought about like um <laughs> I thought about making like a bread out of it. Like a spicy like jalapeno bread. Because a lot of times when you put like beer in um in any type of like baked good, it tends to fluff it up a lot. Mm -hmm. So I really wanted to make like a spicy like jalapeno cheddar bread with it, but I don't know. We're, drunk it. we're drinking it instead. <laughs> <laughs> we're in Rock Island, Illinois, which seems to be another one of those ghost towns. Almost. It's a downtown area and it's kind of abandoned. 
and uh, we're doing a day trotter session today. Maybe we'll save that piano song for last. in this beautiful house from 1818 in Burlington, Iowa, with a musician called Bob Sarr. And it's absolutely stunning. It has all those rooms and, and you can so easily get lost in this house. Um, he says that there is also four spirits haunting the house, but we didn't encounter them. Um, also full of like little hidden objects and snow globes from from different places around the world that are sort of just lying around sporadically <laughs> like here. <laughs> are you going to Madison next? Yes. Cool. Madison's <laughs> a very hip town. Have you ever been there? No. No, but the people seem really lovely. I Madison is cool. Met one person sort of at random in Berlin and she was really lovely. Yeah. There are a lot of very hip people in Madison. Bob, what was touring like in the 60s and the 70s? <laughs> Just 
before the Beatles got here, everybody, you know, it's like you didn't have to be very good. You know, you just had to be in L.A. or New York, mm -hmm. you know, and you could go into the studio and record some piece of crap and there's no multi-track or anything. Everything was done live. People, there are records out there that were made with somebody beating on a, a box with brushes. Seriously. And you just, you know, like get a record deal and go into the studio and cut something and, and it'd be pressed into a 45. Got some here somewhere. And, and then you'd be a big hit and you'd go out and be famous, you know? <laughs> and, and now you, you're in your 60s and you can watch yourself on TV on some, you know, show where they're selling, you know, hits of the 60s and somehow you got on it. Oh, I know what I can get for you. Hang on. <laughs> These are Paul McCartney's bedroom slippers <laughs> oh. from Mexico City when he went there to shoot a video last year because a friend of mine was his personal assistant. You may put one on. You may put no, one okay, on. Okay, I'm not. Um, I will and now you damage can say, it. I wore Paul McCartney's bedroom slippers. And, I wore and your Paul friends are going to go. And, and Christina, how did large. that come to be? Paul McCartney's bedroom slippers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Check this out. Crossing the Mississippi again. It looks like this river is just following us wherever we go. It's so long. Oh, this is amazing. I just love the landscape. And it's a totally random road we took. Yeah, we glad, <laughs> like thanks, John. Sound checking. In a vintage shop. <laughs> it's fun because usually we go to the vintage shops in every town, and now the show is in an actual vintage shop. These are spires that in the sunset rise, which are my uh, label mates, with a label from Chicago called um, Harry Spider Lex, which is fun. An unexpected coincidence. Oh, can I can I ask you a few questions for yeah. the documentary I'm doing? Yes. Cool. Yeah, I'm just as long sort as of you in kind to trade a picture with me too. Yeah. Oh we're yes. Gonna, we're gonna want one. Oh, that was really cool. Mm -hmm. So, how, how long have you guys been organizing shows here? Ooh, um, well, it's, it's it's funny. Our we had a long creation myth actually. Uh, the store began in 2009 from a couple. They were a couple, uh, mm -hmm. Aaron and Indra. They closed the shop and they started a family. And they moved out to LA, and um, I had been kind of just helping helping out around the shop. And I was a really big fan of vintage clothing and just weird stuffing around some places. We're in Madison, Wisconsin, where a lot of signs are in German. It's pretty cute and left-wing and liberal and open and loads of organic crap and bicycles. Oh, shit, I'm missing. I just lost them. Just ahead, turn right. Shit. Turn right. Doing. Christina's getting closer to the action. The lake is completely frozen over. It's just ice. It's not over there and it's moving this way. It's moving this way all this and then it's going to break off. I love it when people tell me things that make me want to be a better human being. Sometimes they make me want to grab a pen and paper and write a song to sing. Patrick Rumbelabel and I are at a house party doing um, sort of a secret or an unofficial show which was kind of spontaneously decided upon and it's fun. I had this, my friends and I, when I came back from, from Hamburg in the like late 80s, like I uh, was living with a bunch of other weirdos and we 
would drink and do a lot of drugs and then we decided we were going to have a band we're going to have a band where like we because my friend and i had motorcycles and we're just like this band exists on motorcycles so we would play open mics and the first open mic that we did we um made like just this horrible noise music because the band was my friend singing my other friend playing like a little toy sampler keyboard mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then me playing guitar through this tiny little amp that fit on the back of my motorcycle we're just gonna dress up go and like make an entertainment and the audience was just like all these folk it was mainly other the other people were like folky like acoustic guitar singer songwriters yeah, yeah, yeah. and they were just like Ugh. like this is fucking horrible it's very different to the normal type of people that would go to an open mic what we were doing yeah yeah, absolutely. yeah, yeah. yeah what we did it sounded more like suicide it sounded like a kind of kind of a combination between like suicide and 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 like uh you know, throbbing gristle, something like that. Yeah. And all kind of improvised. And all improvised. And me playing guitar, like sort of like noodly guitar with a lot of effects and like mm. stuff. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> but the, uh, the owner was just like, that was amazing. And he gave us like a bunch of free pitchers of beer. And we're just like, we'll, we'll be back next week. You know, because we're like, this is great. We played, people hated it, but the but well, we got free beer, and that perfect. that was like perfect. Well, eventually it got to the point where like most of the audience <laughs> was there to see us and and not there to see the other open mic people. And then we mm -hmm. started playing like having our own night there, like on Saturday nights, and then and then we started like playing and like real rock clubs but then it was kind of like the that was kind of when things started to go bad because then like then we started thinking like oh we should write songs Indiana, which is a college town. You made it. You made it back. Um, I'm going to figure out where to put y'all's merch. Poor Christina's not getting better. Every tour <clears throat> and its sickness. It's the first week done. Well, I went this morning and bought some pills. And I bought some pills yesterday. Hmm. And um, so I think the fever has gone down. But the place tonight is really wonderful. It's a uh, must be one of my favorite locations so far. It's a queer bar with wonderful zebra prints and... and oh. Dolly. <laughs> one of uh, my co-owners, uh, one of her buddies did that for her. <laughs> oh, and a missing cat. You're missing your cat? No, I'm just reading this. Oh, yes. I'm missing oh, cat. So buddy's cat. Chicago was incredible. Um, thanks to Harry Spider Legs, the label, um, Patrick and Rebecca. Yeah, so I should I should uh, probably explain that without you guys, the tour would have been a complete disaster. <laughs> yeah, and you did so much to make the whole thing work. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, Patrick put the whole night together, and I could not believe that Bobby Khan said that he would want to do it, and then we hang out and. It was really, really, really wonderful. It's really wonderful when you meet someone that likes your work back. Um, the audiences are definitely much more enthusiastic than they are in any other country where I've played before. Maybe it has something to do with 
the aesthetic, maybe it has something to do with the language. I don't know, but it just seems to f somehow click better. Oh yeah! Le Brun. downtown Cincinnati. It's the opposite of the previous place I played, which was a college town, very middle class. This one seems very poor. You can see it, you can sense it, it's in the air, it's everywhere, it's desperation and hunger and This whole romantic idea of walking around with no protection, sort of nothing. I originally thought that this would be what the tour would be like. I thought I would just go by myself, but since I can't drive, Just be that. <laughs> this is the queue, and this is the ticket. Christina is bound to stay in Cincinnati for the next three days. We had to get her an emergency hotel, and it's pretty bad. I hope she will recover by Monday. So I am going on a Greyhound adventure. <laughs> The bus to Detroit was an hour late and uh, I was sure I'm gonna miss the connection but then of course the other one is an hour late too. The bus was more than two hours late. <laughs> thought I actually arrived in Grand Rapids, Michigan and it's a cute little town with urban knitting and graffiti and lots of cute shops and it has a really nice vibe in the downtown area. Hello. Uh, you're promoting the show tonight. Yes, I am. And uh, how many years have you been doing this? Um, six, maybe five, six at the most. Cool, and how did you start? Um, me and my best friend, who I lived with for about five years, when we were 19, we, uh, we started, uh, decided to start, like, an art and activist magazine, more of, like, a coffee table book instead of just, like, paper, so mm. the way we raised money for printing was doing benefit house shows. What do you say, what, what, what do you think is the difference between, like, proper venues and house shows? Um, there's no stage. There's no barrier between artists and musicians. Most of the time, they're or artists and audience. Most of the time, they're at green rooms. Um, 
you can show up, it's more, and you can be talking to a stranger, and the next thing you know, they're on stage playing. <laughs> Toledo, Ohio, downtown is completely deserted. It's really poor. Everything's really decaying. Tonight's show is at the Detroit Museum of Contemporary Art. We're staying with Greg from the Museum of Contemporary Art. If you move to Detroit, maybe next time you come here, <laughs> these apartments will be renovated and you can move in here. <laughs> be my neighbor. <laughs> and you know, my, my grandfather, my mom's dad, worked for on the assembly line. My dad's dad did a bunch of things before in the late, probably late 60s or 70s, starting up an uh, industrial waste uh, company. So they would clean sewers. This is a house. This was a house. This is the African Bead Gallery. Yeah, inside he has uh, a bunch of like uh, different, all kinds of different beads and also jewelry. Like oh, cool. So it's, it's an actual museum. Uh, he calls it a museum. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's huge. There's all these different panels that have different alphabets and script styles from different languages from wow. Africa. Hmm, it's dark. I have nothing spectacular to say about this place. Home birth of Andy Warhol. There's no patio or anything. So it's a very sweet mayo, which gives it a bit of a sugary flavor. The veggies are relatively fresh. The bun is very sweet. Just about to leave Pittsburgh. As required by the Canadian law. Try out a donut, and I'm not quite sure yet what donut it's going to be. But um, why don't we go inside and and find out? Hello. Hello. So you recommend this one, right? Oh um um no, I'm looking at the um, this one, the Canadian maple. Canadian maple. Yeah. Well, we, we've just been to the U.S. and uh, we've been tasting all the the, the the places in the U.S. and now we're in Canada and we have to go to Tim Hortons, so... Of course, you don't know Tim Hortons for a donut, do you? All right, thanks. It's been around since 1964, which is a very long time. This is what the Canadian maple donut looks like. It doesn't have a hole in the middle, I guess makes it Canadian. It's a very pleasant donut here in Canada. We've 
rush through the cities like there's no tomorrow and get to see so very little of it. It's like a marathon. Evening Montreal. United States of America. And a small flag on the side. Gallery. Two shows. It was really cool to see really small children in the audience, which right. never happens. With the balloons. Never. Yeah, yeah. the balloons were yeah, making this awesome. little crazy shadow show behind you. It was so <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and that, just like seeing, yeah. Yeah, I can't believe they came. You know, you invite people and you don't, you know, you have to expect them. You're like, you know, I really want you to come with your kids. Mm -hmm. and there are tons of people ask me, is this like, is this an appropriate show for our kids? And I'm like, what do you consider appropriate? I mean, my parents are bringing me to rock and roll shows when I was in my mom's uterus. things that we constantly get presents from people and bands that we meet. So we have CDs, tapes, records, all sorts of stuff and we get to listen to it while driving. Describe the experience. I fell on the train. And how long did it take? Uh, it takes like an hour and 40 minutes, and it was like $50. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh. Was return? No. Oh my oh. gosh. Yeah, I need to buy a return. Oh. So take lots of food, so you don't have to buy food. Yes, take yeah. as much food as you can. Yeah, like take as much as you can carry for the whole day. I have another sandwich with me. Yeah, but take some of our snacks, they're nice. Yeah, we have nuts, we have chocolate. Thank you. Mary, could you make a hummus sandwich? Oh yeah, we have hummus and we have like bread and... Like, really? Yes, we do. Empire State and uh, we in front of Danny. I don't know if I want to go in there, but well, our taste here still wants to go and she does and it's like she wants to get instant obesity. So let's do Okay. Okay, go ahead. Let's find out. It looks like a tit. It looks very much like a tit. Are you going to have tits? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Is that okay with you? Yeah, yeah, sure. Is it is it stable like yeah, this? I feel, I feel good about that. Yeah, cool. How do you think touring in Australia was different to touring in the US? Well, it was it, it was interesting. I was thinking when we were having an earlier conversation, um, it actually was really easy to book the Australia tour. The sh some of the shows just 
came together so quick. Keep in mind, it was also only six shows, as opposed to if I was doing a tour in the U.S., it'd be a lot more shows. That would be a very short tour. But um, it actually was. E I kind of made this joke to some to friends of how it was easier to book a show in Sydney than it was in Boston. Today we're staying in a hundred years old mansion in Connecticut. It's beautiful. Looks like a lot of couples are coming here. Yeah, they, they come here so they can have sex behind the trees and feel really romantic. <laughs> like, behind this tree, Ernie and Birdie, they had sex there, and then they got married and had a ton of children. That's like a sacred spot. Like, you can see, like, this is like the area where it happened. <laughs> Just right in front of the fountain. <laughs> The magic fountain. The magic fountain. The fertility fountain. Yes. tonight did not get the show at all. They were kind of polite and quiet and, and the set was very short. So we're going to see Big Bird. Oh, Yellow Bird. Okay. Yellow Bird Up high in banana tree Yellow bird, you sit alone like me. Did your lady friend leave your nest again? That is very sad, makes me feel so bad. Somehow I always end up here when it's off season and it's freezing, but it's just so lovely and all those old signs and orthodox people. <laughs> This is where New York City ends. And a mess of water. <laughs> it was amazing that none of us gave him the finger back. <laughs> he he would have killed us. He would have. He would have totally If the guy like stuck his finger like out the window like yeah, that, I would have. You know, yeah. like, he had a glass pop underneath. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like too much energy. Yeah. He would have totally. Are we in this? Wow. So funny, all the kids are like the little box. <laughs> Should we try to speak Yiddish to them? Should I try to speak Yiddish? <laughs> Should we all? Oh my god. <laughs> I, I don't know. Shane 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 Find some authentic Russian. Caviar? Oh, take it from me, I've done much of it. 
It was across the street from the place where I played at the Pretty gallery. Hardcore. It was really hardcore. Yeah. That's right. So, so I was saying, if you get a, if you get a gentrified crowd, then you're going to miss out on people that are adventurous but don't care if there's happens to be crackheads next door. No, no. I think it really doesn't matter if there are crackheads, but it was doesn't just so matter. heartbreaking to see it. <laughs> like to just kind of you of open it is. you open the window and it's you see people see that look like zombies and they just kind of terrible. terrible to see it. Yes. Yeah. Real. We're outside of a Brooklyn museum, but we're too tired to go and watch the art. Yeah, to so tired. <clears throat> Last night, I was dreaming about sleeping. <laughs> so, I was having all those um, weird dreams about like driving somewhere and then and sleeping and then and then having to get up and then sleeping and. And it was like the entire dream was about sleep. Holy shit. Yeah. Yeah, it was kind of amusing when I woke up and I was like, did I just sleep about, dream about <laughs> sleeping? And do you want to talk about um, the guy from New Jersey? Oh, yes. We, uh, unfortunately, we didn't capture it on film. Which is such a pity because it was maybe the most dramatic moment yesterday. Um, he just, he insisted on showing us the middle finger not once, not twice, but three times. It was quite incredible, and he even decided to speed up, stop next to us, and show us the middle finger again. Yeah, and, and like somehow, we all had the words um, not to to show the finger because I think he would have pulled out a gun and killed us all. You know, he was oh, really he was um, yeah aggressive. <laughs> second time in 24 <laughs> hours that we just randomly taking a tow road just because it's fun. We, we just keep sort of accidentally taking the wrong uh, lane and finding ourselves on bridges that we don't really need to take. This bridge is called Benjamin Franklin Bridge. Yes. And he's very polite. He says, thank you. Thanks. The prominence and size and location reflects Freemasonry and American history. Besides that, it's kind of like a lot of the, the punk and indie community. Uh, and like film is our specialty, so with film it's all kind of like, you know, experimental filmmakers or like classic films presented in new ways. Like next week we're doing The Shining, but we're going to project it backwards and forwards at the same time. And uh, we do a lot of like live <laughs> scores for movies that wouldn't yeah, usually yeah. have a live score. So like we did Eternal Sunshine with a live score and uh, <laughs> did Point Break with a live oh, surf score. So yeah, I guess we, we just we just try to be diverse and creative, no matter how goofy it gets sometimes. Get adjusted. 
bomb. This one I thought I was a tough guy, so I got hurt. Again, Justin. I was um, trying to be the mayor here. I mean, it worked out a little bit, but you know what I mean. Get it, Justin. Oh, I was just chilling with my grandpa over there. Uh, my, um, one of his grandpa's friends, you know what I mean? Just chilling there with that weird face. Get it, Justin. particular other picture of him that I love. I started talking like that. I, uh, I say, wow, amaze, much fluff. People have given us so much stuff. Hello. Hello. We are in Washington DC and I'm posting a postcard from Los Angeles that is uh, a month old. That is, no, 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 it's like seven weeks to eight weeks old. Open it. Just there like the garbage, the irony. Street hotel in the fanciest of the fancy areas in the downtown of Washington, D.C. You can just smell the freedom in the air. You can smell the money. It's a pink panther. Yes. Very exciting. Aww. Mm. Totally artificial and gross. Hello. I'm the president of the United States and I'm going to fuck you over. I'm on TV. I am a very important. Hi, George. Such that much. actually is a dildo. Oh, yeah, it's the world's largest dildo. Fluffy friend. Aww. Baltimore. The truth is that there is no trip. And, we and so there it. are no pictures, huh? So there are no pictures, yeah. We're actually, we took two months off to go to treatment. Yes, we were in the Betty Ford Center. So far the doctors didn't see any improvement. So, so we we'll probably have to stay for another two months. Talking about bar kids. Or the good. Yes. yes, we have lost our mind. Yeah. celebrates the big gulp day. What is a big gulp? Is it sugar? Is it chemicals? Is it poison? Is it vitamins? I have no idea, but I really, I want to find out. Let's go inside. comes in a variety of flavors. This one is the cherry coke. It also got some corn nuts with jalapeno and cheddar. So, tell us, what sort of sensation does the big gulp um, inspire in your mouth? Well, it is the famous cherry coke, which I believe has been around for a very long time. Oh, I hear the crunch. It is very crunchy. You're a pirate. Where's your shit? <laughs> Corn nuts. Uh, where's your shit? This is my ship. 
Oh, she's she's yeah. shipping coconuts. <laughs> <laughs> it's like those those um vehicles. Hello, what's your name? Tommy. Hi, Tommy. Tommy. People call me Thomas. Thomas, hey, do you want to be in our documentary? Yeah, sure. Hey. Are, you, are you guys from another country? Yeah, we're from Europe. Oh, cool. Oh. Do you live here? Yeah. Yeah, oh. we're filming a documentary about our trip to the United States. Oh, cool. What country are you from? Um, well, we are like, I was born in Germany and Mary lives in Germany. Cool. And uh, she's, a, she's, a, she's a pop star in Europe. But she's uh, playing a show tonight in Baltimore. Cool. Like, can yeah. Like, can we find you on YouTube or anything? Yeah, you can find her on YouTube. Yeah. Like, her name's Mary Olchak. I'm write it down. Hey, what's your name? Hey, I'm Adam. Hi, Adam. Welcome. You guys like Camden? Yeah, it's awesome. We just got here. We, we just got here like an hour ago. And, uh, and we are uh, doing a review of the big doll. And uh, so we just like we just gonna hang out here until the show. Yeah, we're on spring break, so we've just been around here all week. Oh really? Where yeah. you guys live? Uh, oh, we live down there. Oh, okay. You you live you live in in, in you, live, you live in Camden. Oh, yeah. cool. What's your name again? My name is Mary. That's Christina. Yeah, you you, you I think I wanna find you on YouTube. O C H E R O C H E R O C H E R O C H E R yeah. yeah. Well, enjoy your spring break. Right. Have thank fun. You. Right. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I just noticed that we haven't been documenting our trips to the thrift stores for a while. So far, there's a lot of hair on the floor. No, my locks. They're all gone. No more locks. No more. You're a different person. What have you done? Say the name, please. Zakari. Yes. Zakari. <laughs> Zakari! 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 Would you like to buy a hoover? Zakari! 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 Chest hair! Zakari! Zakari! Trunk! Zakari! Trunk! Zakari! Wake up! Zakari! Squirrel over there. It's black and it's fluffy. Much Zakari! Much many. We went to strip malls every single day. Yeah, we've been exploring the suburbs. And it's been horrible. Three more shows to go and I already feel the tour aftermath. The thought of coming back home and doing pretty much the same thing I did before is just terrifying. Tonight show is in a relatively small place in Virginia, uh, just outside of Roanoke. And uh, I'm playing tonight with a band called Bastards of Fate, and it's also their album release party, which is 
basically about vampires. So in each of our little pre-order kits, <laughs> there's a bottle of holy water from Pops. Yes. There is a little jar of garlic for a pellet. There's one of these snakes. They're all individually numbered. Oh, wow. Made by Jason Wells. And they're wrapped in instructions, which may or may not have something to do with another rock and roll artist. And a wooden cross, and they're in these velvet bags with a drawstring. You get the deluxe copy of the new Bastards of Fate record. Vampires are real and palpable. You get one of our velvet self-defense home vampire eradication kits. Charlotte, North Carolina. It's full of hipsters. Oh yeah. And vintage shops. I like this place. first time that I felt that I was really, really, really tired. And um, unfortunately, the promoter also decided to put me last amongst five acts. And the audience was exhausted. I was exhausted. Everybody was exhausted. Um, one more show to go. One more. Just ahead. Yes. It's nice, isn't it? <laughs> it's really cool. So they don't do shows here very often? Not very often, but they're always good. All the ones I've been to have been very good. Oh, what's the last, the very, 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 very last show? Yeah. It's the 50th show, and it's at a bookshop, and I'm really excited about it. You know, what, what's mine is yours pretty much. Huh? I said, what, you can have whatever you want. Okay. You're welcome. Oh. This by a rocking, by rocking chair. Hey, Sam. Hey. So you're promoting and playing a show tonight? Yeah, yeah. I am promoting and playing a show, which is why well, oh. I used to do that a lot in, in 2010. Smell your hand. Smell it. I am. Smell your hand. I am smelling it. it. Smells good, doesn't it? Yeah. It smells like success. Yes, it does. I'm gonna rub a little success on you tonight. Thank you. How, how, were, how was your touring experience in the US? Like, you, uh, st you started talking about the worst. So I played to a really apathetic crowd, and my friend who booked that show, I guess, noticed the apathy of the crowd, and so she tried to, I guess, spruce everything up by, like, <laughs> biting me really hard in the shoulder when I was performing. Like, <laughs> just like, ah! This, this like girl that was kind of cute started dancing with me and I was like, oh well, I was like, I guess this evening isn't going to be so bad after all. I was like, and so I was dancing with her and all of a sudden she grabs like the back of my head and like pulls me very close, pulls her mouth very close to my ear as she goes, do you have uppers? Can you do a little dance for me? No. Go ahead. Do a little dance for me. Come on. 
so upset when I turn this music off and start performing. I like unplug the DJ sound and quickly plug mine in while I'm talking and I'm like, hi Chicago, I'm Three Brain Robot, it's, you know, it's nice to meet you, blah blah blah, and all of a sudden this guy in the audience is like, turn the music back on! And I'm like, uh, I'm getting ready to perform, uh, and before I could finish my sentence, that girl that was reading poetry, crawls up to me and like grabs the microphone from my hand, like trying to take it from my hand. And she's like, give me that microphone. And, and like, I don't know what to do. And she like claws my arm, like, like puts her claws into my arm. Uh, and I'm like, ah, oh! and I just panic. And I like pick her up. She's pretty small. And I like lift her like, like onto my shoulders. <laughs> and then I just throw her and she's just like, like hits the ground and then like rolls across the ground and then she starts laughing insanely like <laughs> and like crawling towards me like reaching for the microphone still and I'm just like oh okay and I just like start my tracks and I like mm -hmm. just start performing Do you think you're ready to perform Sam? Yes! <laughs> I think you're ready Thank you I agree with you <laughs> I'm glad Get your stuff ready it is ready. Go ahead. I believe in you. I am ready. Show these people what you're made of. I made of skin. Show them how beautiful you are. I have hair. I know it. And you know it. Thank you. Go ahead. I am! Let's get started. Stop talking! Alright, thank you. <laughs> Uh, this wonderful thing over here broke about two weeks ago, and now it's basically two separate parts that are kind of held together by this wonderful piece of tape. So let's see what happens tonight. sense. Shocking. Why? <laughs> we didn't die. What was the response from the audience about the kimono? I think the people liked the kimono very much. There was a Japanese guy that told me, oh, I recognize the temple in the picture. It's from Kyoto. <laughs> The last hour was pretty intense. intense. Yeah, I think that was the worst. And uh, I think I think about a 580-mile drive yesterday. Um. I think I'm still zapped <laughs> and kind of a little bit overwhelmed and tired. I think my brain's fried. 